Hey everyone, welcome back to Talking Sense. Uh, today I thought we'd have a look at a Francesca Bianchi perfume. I, I tried one recently, really liked it. Um, and this is the second Francesca Bianchi perfume I've had some experience with. And yeah, I thought we could talk about that. So last time I talked about Sex and the Sea, which was just a massive civet bomb and beautiful, uh, just really nice. If you want to check out the review on that one, um, I, it's around. And recently I received from Smurfy Girly, so thanks very much Smurfy Girly, um, sent me The Lover's Tale, which is a really big Castorian bomb. So, you know, it's, it's quite interesting that it's kind of like the other side of the kind of big animalic hits basically so the lover's tale and um, the notes in this one are uh, bergamot honey mimosa aldehydes egyptian jasmine bulgarian rose heliotrope peach iris butter leather musk castorium labdanum sandalwood vetiver and oak moss it's quite a pungent mix there um, and it is a very pungent perfume <laughs> when it opens <clears throat> it's very similar to Sex and the Sea in that you're going to get smacked right in the face. So let's give it a spray and we'll go through that. I've got the dry down up here. I've been wearing this today um, so you know I can sort of refer back to that. But let's have a look at that opening. For me this perfume has three quite distinct. They're a progression of each other but and they it, each sort of section builds upon the last but there is three distinct sections to this cut the life of this perfume the first being the opening so well that actually completely missed so this perfume when it opens is gonna be just absolutely ferocious in its kind the, the, the castorium is just massive for me when this opens you get iris castorium and leather and that's really it i mean there's probably more but for me those three notes dominate everything else you get this carroty rooty earthy iris which i really like you get quite an interesting sort of quite skanky leather uh very but then that's obviously helped by the castorium but you get but the leather for me is quite i don't know it's it is very raw leather and then you just get absolute ton of this ashy sort of fiery hot castorium uh smells dark and on fire and it's really really nice it, it is very full on um, so again just like Sex and the Sea if this is an introduction to kind of some animalic skank and those kind of notes like castorium civet etc this might scare you a little bit it, it, but I think it's quite tame in comparison whereas I think Sex and the Sea is Civet in general is a bit more kind of sharp and savage, I think, than um, sort of castorium. So this one, castorium has a sweetness to it, um, and, and this fragrance, it definitely it has this honey note that, that definitely lends a sweetness to it and eases you in a little bit more. But it's still quite a frightening opening if this is an introduction to animalics for you. Um, but anyone else, you, you, you're going to, like, you know, if, if you're kind of well kind of versed in animatics and you enjoy that and that's just the style that you like, you, you're going to be right at home here. This is really, really nice. The first signs for me that things are getting quite funky and an interesting part of this opening is that you start getting signs of that jasmine and um, it's quite an indolic fecal jasmine at times. And it, it, it creeps in a little bit. But for me, what I really like about this is it restrains that because fecal jasmines are probably not my cup of tea, in all honesty. Um, so for me, I like the fact that this perfume reigns that back a little bit and it, and it just allows it to kind of creep in 
now and then. And I think by doing that, you get all the interest of a kind of indolic, dirty jasmine, but it doesn't ever like swamp the whole thing and, and sort of wreck it. <laughs> like, or, or you know, wreck it as far as my taste is concerned. Um, once you got past that first sort of initial sort of minute of just that castorium, which I really like, but I appreciate not everyone is gonna really like, but once you get past that, that initial minute or so of that, it gets, it starts kind of chilling down, smoothing out and working its way towards that heart, which is gonna last for a really long time and it's gonna be like the meat and bones of this perfume really. And that for me is a bit of mimosa, a, a bit heliotrope just to smooth things out. A, a, a slight hint of jasmine with a little bit of a fecal vibe to it although that after about an hour that's gonna drop away almost completely and say the actual heart i think what the, the big notes in the heart are going to be iris honey and leather and i think they're absolutely beautiful and the honey in this is quite interesting in that it's sticky you know viscous and syrupy but it's never too sweet uh, and it's not too gross. It's not hyper-realistic. It, it doesn't have that kind of photorealism uh, that you get in some perfumes. Something like B, for example, Zoologist has like that quite photorealistic vibe. Um, and, it, and it doesn't have any of that beeswax um, in there either to, to kind of aid that. Um, instead, it stays a very sticky honey and i really like it for that i think it's really nice um and i think at this point it's touching on like gourmand territory and i think you don't you know the castorium starts to kind of blend in a little bit more in the background and it becomes a bit more sort of of a crowd pleaser and i think it actually kind of hits that edge of being almost like you know very very much a crowd pleaser the only thing that kind of stops it i would say being a straight kind of like super easy super crowd pleasing perfume is that kind of leather under there and um, that kind of keeps with the castorium that just kind of keeps things kind of fiery and 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 sort of burning but but that's not to say that that's not excellent like i think it is i think it's absolutely excellent i think it's what makes this perfume brilliant because I do think that this perfume is brilliant I, I, I think it's absolutely beautiful I think it's gorgeous I think when you get into that heart it really starts singing and it's this just lovely to say like very nearly sort of gourmandy honey with a skanky sort of fiery leather and what's really interesting is is this is really really sexy and Whereas Sex and the Sea has that civet and is quite, I, mem I mentioned that it's quite flirtatious and, you know, quite a sexy, raunchy, filthy, flirtatious perfume. This one is a lot of those things, but it doesn't have that flirtatious edge. This one for me feels more intimate, more carnal. It's more sort of raw and passionate. Uh, uh, it sort of drops the... I suppose the castorium is not quite so sharp as the civet and it gives it more of a kind of deeper, basier kind of vibe. You, it, it, gets, it feels more carnal and say like passionate and, and raw kind of sexuality. Um, and it's really, really good. But it is again, like a, a very sort of raw, sexy perfume. Um, so again, like you do have to be a little bit bold to, to kind of pull it off you know you, I don't well I don't know maybe anyone can pull it off but I feel like you know you need a little bit of kind of assurance of yourself that, that you know you smell like an absolute beast because you do then that that kind of heart there that that lasts for about you know three or four or five hours and then you start kind of moving more into the dry down which really just becomes a kind of soft leather and honey kind of vibe um, and it is really really nice um, it's a really chilled out relaxed um, dry down that just smells great 
for me, it's all in that heart. Um, I, I love the iris in the opening, and I love it in the heart where it kind of relaxes a bit, it drops a bit of the carroty kind of earthiness, and it becomes more of a just kind of a, a cooling note in that middle with that, all that kind of fiery castorium and the, 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 the big kind of punchy notes in that middle, and it just kind of sits there to kind of relax and chill things down a little bit and cool things generally, because you know, iris is quite cool feeling kind of note in a fragrance right and, and, and in the, this it kind of works just to kind of offset that all those other notes which are quite hot and and, and sort of alive um, the jasmine lays right down I feel like in that start like I can smell it now and I will be able to smell it for about the first hour you're gonna get hints of this kind of fecal jasmine just pop in and out um, and, and for me I, I appreciate the restraint and I like it um, but it it's very much borderline for me like, like I don't really like in like jasmines that get too indolic and and if this just tipped over a little bit more it would be I would not like it um, but I, re I, I do really like it in here and I like you know the small times when you can catch smells of it because it, it just kind of adds a dynamic kind of vibe and, and, and a bit of interest to it. Um, overall though, I think this is excellent. So who do I think it's for? I, I, I think it's unisex. Um, I think where Sex and the Sea was unisex but leaning feminine, I think this is actually unisex but leaning masculine, despite the fact that it's got a fair bit of floral and honey in there, that I think pulls it unisex and you know if anything a little bit feminine it's got that kind of rough leather and that castorium um but I, I think it's gently leaning masculine when i say leaning masculine very gently i think this is full-on unisex um I, I think it's gorgeous i think dress it up dress it down whatever you want i think i i actually would like to dress this down i think it would suit really well to just kind of grunging it up um but it, but it suits pretty much anything. Um, in times of weather, I, I think this is probably more of a colder scent. Um, I, I think possibly up until kind of spring, uh, but I, I do think like autumn, winter, spring, I, I think, you know, if you're really picky about that and you are really wanting to nail it, it's winter. But it, but I think sort of winter leading to spring is like, like now basically is, is like a really good time for this. Um, and, and I, I really like it. Um, I wore it today, I say, and it's been the hottest day we've had since, like, you know, last autumn or whatever, you know, um, so it, it was fine. Um, so I, I think it works really well, kind of winter into spring. Um, I, I think excellent for this perfume. So yeah, overall, absolutely amazing. I, I This is the second perfume now I smell from Francesca Bianchi, both of them, have been really my style. I really like them. I think they're really nice. Um, I'll, I'll be buying both of them. Uh, I think if you're into your animalics, well, I think I, it and and kind of a bit of filth and a bit of skank, you really can't go wrong. Like you'll you'll enjoy this. And if you're not into them, I think these are that next step from sort of dipping your toe you know like like they are quite pungent and quite punchy in those openings but once those openings fade down a little bit and you give it like 15 minutes 20 minutes they get really nice um and you you sort of start forgetting that it's got this animalic skank so i i do think and especially this one a lover's tale I do think if you're not into them, not if you're not into animatics at all, if you, I mean, if you're not into animatics at all, I, I don't think this is right for you. But, but you know, if you would like to kind of give them a trance or, or, or sort of dip your toe a little bit, I, I think they're quite good for that because, say, A Lover's Tale is, is very, especially this one, say, um, it's, it's got a kind of sort of sweet, syrupy gourmand edge with that honey. And I think that that kind of works as a kind of nice, smooth, sort of easy going heart to the fragrance um, with the iris in there as well. The leather, say that that's a really nice leather in there. Um, just great. I think 
probably the only thing that will put people off of this one in particular is Mimosa. Because I know Mimosa is not always like the most kind of friendly note. And I know that can put some people off with that kind of spicy kind of edged things. Um, I think it adds a gorgeous piece of kind of spicy raunch to this perfume, but I, I can see that it, it might put some people off. Um, but but generally I feel like it plays underneath that honey and leather. So, you know, they're, they're much more dominant. Um, so don't let that put you off too much. But yeah, otherwise, excellent perfume. Really impressed with Francesca Bianca SA. I've tried to, I love them both and want to buy them both as soon as possible really you know once all this guff blows over I'll, I'll um i'll be buying them both i think excellent fragrances truly so yeah thanks very much for watching i hope you enjoyed it take care stay healthy i'll speak to you soon cheers